I'm here with Matt Tokorsi, and we're talking about your home province, uh, New Brunswick, with an election coming up. What's so interesting about New Brunswick politics? So folks might not be aware, but October 21st is a set election date in New Brunswick. There's been speculation for the better part of a year now that Premier Higgs might drop the writ and try to go to the polls. Um, but New Brunswick is fascinating, folks. You've got a real language divide. You've got a real urban-rural divide. And you've got green party seedlings that have been sprouting for about a decade that cause a lot of problems, especially for the Liberal Party. Yeah, well, what we've got up here on the screen is the 2020 election results. Uh, and it's actually shaded where the darker colors are ridings that were won by larger margins. The first thing I would point out is that if you look at the north of the province up here and a little bit to the side here, there's a lot of ridings that are dark red, which means Liberals won it by 25 points or more. That's actually 15 of the 17 ridings they won the last election were by a huge margin. Uh, I think we can consider those to be pretty safe seats in the next election. Yeah. But why is it that this large portion of the province is so solidly red? For the better part of a decade, Alex, the northern part of the province and the Acadian coast of the province, the eastern side, has been largely liberal. If you look at that big block of red up north, that's where four out of every five people in New Brunswick speak French as a first language. And only about 50% of that northern part of the province is fully bilingual. On the Acadian coast, where you've got red and you've got some green that has seeped in, it's about 60% first language French and about 60% fully bilingual. By and large, that population in New Brunswick have stuck with the Liberals for the last decade. And it's very likely they'll continue to do so again. Well, it's interesting. It means the Liberals don't have to play a lot of defense in the next election, but they need to play offense because sure you, need, you need 25 seats to win a majority government in New Brunswick, and they only have 15 really safe ones. There's another 10 that they have to win. And the problem that they're running up to is that if you look at these dark blues, there's the same number of seats that are really dark. In fact, there's 16 seats that the Conservatives won by 25 points or more. And when you factor in seats that were a two-way race between the Conservatives and the People's Alliance, which is another right-wing party that has kind of collapsed since then, uh, you actually have 21 seats that are safe blue and only about 13 seats across the province that are really competitive. Yeah. What can you tell us about those 13 seats? Well, as you and I were discussing earlier, really the Liberals have to run the table in at least 10 of those 13 seats and the Progressive Conservatives really only have to win four of those 13 seats to pick up government. With the People's Alliance, those purple specs that you see on the screen having joined the Progressive Conservatives back in 2022 makes it that much doubly tougher for, for the Liberals. Especially if we go into a place like Fredericton and we look at the downtown seat, Fredericton South, where David Kuhn, the party leader for the Greens, first won that seat in 2014 and then has built a bit of a movement that has not only kept him safe in that seat, but has helped uh, the Green Party win seats in the Acadian and uh, eastern part of the province. Fredericton is a battleground for the Liberals. You've got Fredericton South, which is now divided into two different seats, and you've got Fredericton North, which right now is a light blue shade, which they won in 2018 and then lost in 2020. That's a battleground area that they need to pick back up. If we zoom out of there and we go down to St. John, there's a seat, St. John Harbor, that is always razor thin tight. Liberals won it at a judicial review back in 2018, and the Conservatives won it in a very tight race in 2020. The incumbent, Arlene Dunn, has since resigned. It's an open seat. It'll be a battleground. Yeah, and that's certainly a, a seat where the Green Party, having a little bit of support, uh, has made it a, a much more complicated race as well. Uh, if you zoom out here a little bit, you know we see from the last election, we've got about a five-point edge for the PCs. Uh, recent polls have the Liberals up by five or six, but because of all these geographic factors, that might not be enough. Uh, honestly, we're probably looking at a scenario where the Liberals need to win by eight or nine points in order to form a majority. That's right. Uh, which is going to be a really interesting, really interesting race. Uh, and we're going to be paying close attention to it. We'll probably also be paying very close attention to the other elections going on around the country this year. It's an year. exciting year. Yeah, we've got Saskatchewan, we've got British Columbia. So if you follow Spark Advocacy and Internology, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, we will keep you updated. We will have breakdowns of what's going to be coming in those races as well.